time now for a review of the French press here on France Fan Cap, which I'm joined by Florence Filemino. Hello okay. to you, Florence. Uh, you're going to be starting off with uh, Liberation, the centre left paper, looking back uh, on the Syrian uprising. That's right, then. They don't mince their words today. They call it two years of crimes. And you see this uh, photo here, a uh, bloody portrait of Bashar al-Assad that was brandished in February during an anti-government demonstration in the town of Idlib in the north. Uh, now, Liberation says that Bashar al-Assad has completely destroyed his country to stay in power. Uh, but unfortunately, according to Liberation, the opposition is too divided to be able to throw, overthrow uh, the regime. Le Figaro, meanwhile, uh, looks at these two years of wars and says that after these two years of wars, the, the, comp the country is completely cut up into pieces. Uh, it says that uh, in the summer of 2012, the uprising turned into a civil war, and now it's turning into a war of attrition that's likely to go on. And uh, you see a map there that uh, shows uh, just how uh, divided the country is. Uh, troops loyal to Bashar al-Assad control Damascus and territories in uh, the west and the south, as well as the key towns of Hama, Dara, and Homs, while rebels uh, and jihadists control uh, the north and the east of the country. Uh, but as you can see, uh, a lot of Syria, about 60% uh, of Syria, is a desert. Uh, so, in, in other words, each camp controls about 20% of the remaining territory. And France and Britain are currently at the head of this... Uh this uh, bid to tip the balance, if you like, by arming the rebels. Huh? That's right. Uh, Liberation points out that the timing of this announcement is very symbolic, so these, this two-year anniversary. Uh, so France and the UK, basically what they want to do is accelerate an EU summit to discuss lifting an EU arms embargo on Syria. Uh, the idea is to make the conflict uh, less asymmetrical. Uh, now, yesterday, uh, Foreign Minister Laurent Fabius actually wrote an article in Liberation where he argued that lifting this embargo will put pressure on Bashar al-Assad. Uh, now, the hope is that this, uh, by lifting this embargo, he'll become worried uh, and it will push him to choose a political solution, a political solution that includes his departure. But Le Figaro points out that the risk is that this civil war uh, turns into a very regional conflict. Okay, next up is uh, La Croix, the French uh, Catholic paper, and they're still fascinated by the Pope. They're fascinated by the Pope. It won't stop anytime soon. Uh, La Croix, the Christian paper, takes a look at the very first day of uh, Pope Francis uh, and hails this first South American Pope, uh, a symbol that the Church is shifting its center of gravity to the South. Uh, so Le Croix points out that yesterday the world was discovering Francis, uh, just who he is, what his personality is like. Uh, he, for instance, uh, wanted to pay for his own hotel room, travel uh, in the bus with cardinals instead of his own private vehicle. Uh, and Francis, meanwhile, was discovering what his job is going to be like, uh, taking the f his first steps as pope. Uh, he had his first church service at the Sistine Chapel. And Le Figaro on their front page today says that in his homily, uh, he really showed what his uh, personality is going to be like. He showed his new and biting style, what they say. Uh, pope Francis called the church to order uh, and Le Figaro says that he's really starting to shift the tone uh, in the Vatican away from Benedict XVI's uh, theology and more uh, into a radical humility, helping the poor, and more importantly, uh, spreading the Catholic faith. Okay, next up, uh, pensions here in France. Many presidents have tried to change the system. Few have succeeded. That's right. It's in Aujourd'hui en France today, which uh, points out that three years after Nicolas Sarkozy's government uh, reform the pension system. Well, the current government is facing what they call the same pension <coughs> brain a teaser. Uh, so the current system is basically costing way too much. The government needs to find 20 billion euros by 2020 to keep the system afloat. So yesterday, trade unionists and uh, business representatives managed to agree on part of the solution to decrease the uh, deficit. And that is basically that during the next three years, pensioners uh, from the private sector, uh, their pensions will not be indexed to inflation. So basically, their purchasing power is going to decline. Uh, that's not likely to make very many people happy, and that's on the front page of the Business Daily, Les Echos today, that points out that pensioners are going to have to tighten their belts uh, as their pur purchasing power takes a hit. Finally, it's back in the headlines, and perhaps one way of tightening your belt, uh, buy horse meat. That's right. Now, this is uh, this is on in Rue 89. It looks at the unlikely win winners of this horse gate scandal, and that's your local butcher. Uh, basically, and during the last months, business has been booming. Their clientele is younger. They just want to be able to follow the quality of their meat, and so they're willing to pay a little bit more. So they say thank you. Thank you for this. And some French people, it seems, getting back on the horse. Thanks very much, Florence Fleminot.